guys, Jay brought a performance here. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a longer video on this at some point, but for right now, and this is gonna be hard to tell, but I want to show you something that's unique about a C6. Um, I get a lot of people, mainly with manual valve bodies, that say, "Yeah, I adjusted the shifter, and." I got no second, or won't downshift, or won't upshift, but downshifts, or sometimes I hit third, sometimes it doesn't, whatever, all kinds of different things. And I typically tell them the same thing, it's the shifter adjustment. And they all say, oh no, nope, I checked it, checked it. Well, I'm going to go over this uh, in a lot of detail in another video, but for right now I kind of want to show you something. Uh, because this is kind of, I thought of this while I was dyno in this unit. It's an easy thing to check. Uh, and I know you're not really going to be able to feel this with your own hands, but... So what's unique about a C6 that you don't have this issue with, say, uh, Turbo 400, 350, uh, C4 even, AOD... Those all have what we call true spool valves. Uh, this does not. Uh, so what happens is the manual select valve in the valve body gets side loaded when there's hydraulic force on it. So what that means is if we grab this shifter, it's real easy to move. Uh, engine's not on and that sort of thing, okay? So moves no problem. So your shifter, and you know, this is primarily a problem with anything with a cable, especially shifters that are ratcheting shifter, you know, that, that will ratchet forward or reverse. Um, I find that gate shifters are better, uh, at least especially with this unit, because there's just so much resistance on it. You need a really stout and a really short shifter cable. And if the cable has got, uh, if the cable is kind of long and, and flexes, probably not going to work for a C6. You're going to have trouble with it if you're running a manual valve body. Uh, so let me try to show you here. I don't know if this is going to really prove my point or not because you're not here to feel this, but let me fire this up and you're going to see me, what I'm going to do. I'm going to move the shifter through the gears with the vacuum connected. What that does is lowers the pressure. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run this um, with no vacuum where the pressure goes up, which will simulate a manual valve body in higher pressures. And you're going to see, hopefully... You're going to see that I'm kind of going to be struggling to move this shifter. Um, let's, um, so a couple things I'm going to do here. Give me one second. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about with the manual select valve. And I'm also going to get the camera stand set up because I'm going to need both hands here. So give me one minute. Okay. So this here, this is what's called a spool valve, okay, and it's perfectly round, so the oil pressure is balanced on all sides, and this is out of a C4, and that's typical of a lot of valve bodies, but then you have a C6, it's still round, but you see these slots in that are machined into it so what happens is depending on what gear you're in and this and that you may have oil here in this area and what this does is it side loads the valve so you'll have that pressure on one side of the valve so it forces it up against the bore and it makes it harder to slide so, you know, the obvious thing is you want to make sure... Now, some of this is a sliding type. Some of them have 
a detent spring in here, but it's the same principle. Um, so you want to make sure this slides in and out very easy. Um, actually, it didn't at first because this valve body had a lot of um, had a lot of like clutch dust and a little fine metal in it. But um, I polished the outside of this valve on the lathe, which you sometimes have to do. And the other thing I have is I have these nylon brushes, and I'm running this on a um, you know an electric drill, so you can run this in the bore and clean it out sometimes you have to do that so that, that's an important step to do um, so you just gotta make sure you just gotta make sure that this thing slides nice and free okay that's the first thing that's that's important it's important on all of them but especially on a C6 this is important so make sure of that um, so that's what I'm talking about the difference between I don't know if there's a special name for this type of valve or not. I honestly don't know, but uh, so this type of valve with the slots on the side will get side loaded hydraulically. So it'll be, you know, it moves nice and free on the bench or when there's no oil pressure on the unit. But when there's oil pressure on the unit, and especially depending on what gear you're in and this and that, mm -hmm. the valve gets side loaded and becomes can be very resistant to movement. So it becomes very important to get a very high quality shifter. And like I said, the ones that typically are what they call a ratchet shifter, where you can just shift up, shift down, it'll ratchet either direction. It's not uh, specific to forward or reverse pattern. Those typically on a C6 don't work very well with a manual valve body. Uh, a lot of times you'll have problems. I don't know, honestly, all the, I couldn't tell you all the good ones and bad ones and shifters. I know that the winter shifter seems to work really well for people and the uh, cheetah shifter. And uh, those, those work really well. I've had a lot of customers switch to one of those or the other and a lot of these problems have gone away. And I'm not saying there's not other good ones out there too. I'm, I'm sure there is. I just... A little bit more familiar with those two. They have a, uh, they're a gate design and they have a short and strong cable, uh, very positive detents in it, and uh, just been a good shifter. They've been around a long time, but again, I'm sure there's others. So okay, uh, I again, I at some point I will do a, a, a lengthy video and show you all about. Aligning the shifter, because aligning the shifter is not easy either. Uh, I know you guys think it is, but it can be a difficult process, and you, it's really a two-man job. Not that you can't do it by yourself, but it's a hell of a lot easier with a helper. And um, I'll go over that another time, but let's, uh, let's go back to the dyno, and I'm going to show you. It's going to be hard for you to tell, but... I want to show you the difference between how easy that shift lever moves when there's either a, you know no load or light load on it and then we'll uh, disconnect the vacuum modulator and the pressure will go up to where it would be on a manual valve body and you'll probably see how much more difficult you'll see me struggling to move it I mean it's it's that different uh, it honestly is so let me get set up over there with the stand. So give me one second. Okay, uh, let me fire this up. All right, so right now, I'm making about 70 pounds of pressure. So if you look at that large gauge on the left, now it's about 70 pounds. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to move this lever. And it moves very easy. We don't have a lot of pressure on it. 
So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to disconnect the vacuum line. That's going to bring us to full pressure. So now, you can see we're up at almost 200 pounds of pressure. And this is, you know, typical of a manual valve body. You know, they'll, they'll run usually 180 to 220, depending on application and how it's set up. So, I don't know, let's see how it is to move this lever and if you can tell that I'm struggling with it. Yeah, it's resisting me. I don't know if you can tell. I'm not faking it. It's, it's a lot tougher. I mean, I can move it, but you can see I'm struggling with it compared to before. All right, enough of that. Um, so, I don't know. I, I don't know if a video demonstration really does this justice. It's almost one of these things you have to come here and, and feel this for yourself. And you can do it in your own car. I mean, just, you know, just check that shifter. You know, you, a lot of you guys probably know this already, how easy that moves when the engine's off. And then you go and start it up, and now it's hard to move. And you think, oh, my God, there's something wrong. It's just the way these units are. And the more pressure you run, the more resistance is on that. So when you get to a vehicle that's making a lot of power and you need to run a lot of pressure, man, uh, it gets tough to move and you gotta have a good shifter and it's gotta be aligned very precise. And you need help. You know, you, you're gonna need a buddy with that. Uh, again, I'm gonna go over this in more detail. I just wanna do a quick one here. So, all right, I think that's all I got to say on this for now. Uh, look for an update on this at some point. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching.